Hello everyone, in the continuation of the series of videos related to using Terra World to create a highly detailed environment for use in military simulators, in this section, we will discuss other parts of the Biomes tab. It should be noted that this video was made with the updated version of Terra World and this version will be available to you soon. Now, in this video, we will discuss how to filter and extract data from land cover satellite images of the area in order to add vegetation, trees, to our environment. To get started, go to the Heights tab and select a new slope filter in the Add Mask section. The goal is to create a new slope range between 20 and 90 degrees. As you can see in the settings, you will easily be able to select or change the variables needed to create this layer. By doing this, we create a new range between 20 to 90 degree angles so that we can add natural features to the terrain surface if needed. Next, go to the Colors tab and by creating a color filter, you will be able to extract your desired color from the satellite image of the area so that we can continue to cover our desired plants using the analysis provided by Terra World software allows us to apply them at the terrain surface. Here I select the green color as an example and in the input section I attribute it to the satellite image. Now it's time for the Biomes tab. Go to Add Mask and select a new biome filter. Select the type of woods and leave the rest by default. The reason for choosing this type of biome is that we want to extract the coverage of the trees in the area from the land cover satellite image. Repeat this and select your biome filter type trees. This will give us a more accurate filter of the area. Now we need a new area mixer, which we select from the Add Mask section. In the settings of this new blender, set the blending mode option to OR. This allows the software to integrate items already stored in our biome filters into environmental data, or in other words, if there is information about woods in the area, or any information from trees available in the land cover data, is considered to apply them simultaneously. Now in the input section, select two new biome filters from the list of filters and continue your work. Once again, select a new biome filter from the Add Mask list, and this time set its type to Orchard, and the rest to Default. The goal is to re-analyze and get more data from the land cover satellite image of the area. In order to integrate the two previous biome filters with the new one, a new area mixer will be needed. Like the previous area mixer, we set the blending mode to OR, and this time we combine the new biome filter with the previous area mixer. We need to combine the three new biome filters with the color filter that we have already created. We will still need a new area mixer with blending mode, or an input of the latest area mixer plus the created color filter. Here's how to connect them. To complete all these steps and also to attribute them to the filter slope that we created at the beginning of this video, we need to create a new area mixer. 
but this time we choose the mode sub and this means that all biome filters in addition to combining with the color filter we did before, subtract from the desired slope range so that we can attribute the required items to the result of this process. Note that in the blending mode sub and in the input part, the first option should always be selected larger and wider area than the second option. Now you can see how to connect this item with the built-in filter slope. Here we have completed the segmentation and filtering of data from land cover satellite image for our intended purpose. To see how the system works and also the result so far, just goes to the colors tab and compare the results with the image by changing the satellite image source to OpenStreetMap. It is time to add the first scatter to the filtered range. To do this in the Biomes tab under the Add Scatter menu, select GPU Instant Scatter from the options. The purpose of selecting this option is to add vegetation or other environmental elements to the surface of the terrain. Other options such as Object Scatter or Terrain Tree Scatter are also available for this, but this method will perform better. Now the first thing in the settings section is to add the prefab file in the prefab settings section. I have already saved several tree samples by default in my project, and by accessing their folder, I will attach the type of tree I want to this section. To complete this process and in the placement settings section, we must activate the horizontal rotation check for each type of tree that is to be placed in the scene. Leave the rest as default and at the end of the input section, we will attach the last area mixer that we made before. By pressing the Generate button, we apply all the things we have worked on so far in this part of our graph. As you can see, the first natural complication appeared on the terrain surface. The result is based on the filters applied in the intended area and extracted from the land cover satellite image. By going to Edit and selecting the Project Setting window, I want to change the quality of my scene for higher quality, Go to the Shadow Distance section and change its parameter, I select the number 450. Also, by changing the LOD BIOS option, the prefab's LOD load on the scene is affected and increases more smoothly. Now go to the Hierarchy section to access the new layer we created in the scene, and in the Terra World subgroup, select the desired layer by clicking on it. Then go to the Inspector section to access all the parameters of this layer. Note that all the changes we make in the new Terra World update must be confirmed, so after clicking the Update Changes button, they will be implemented. For example, I change the Distance Model parameter to see the result in both cases. I choose 10 for this option. To get the right size for this layer of tree, 
We create a game object and by placing and adjusting its dimensions approximately to human dimensions, we change our desired size to reach a logical number. This game object, in addition to giving a better view to apply the desired settings, will also give us more data, which will be the approximate height of the terrain. I will use this data to correct the height of the arranged layer and by changing the relevant parameter to my desired number, I will achieve the desired result. Note that be sure to save all the changes you have made to your graph. Then go to the Area tab and select the Save option in the Graph section to save your graph to your computer. You must also save the created scene so that we can save the changes we want to make in this scene separately from the graph. To make the scene more realistic with nature, I want to add another layer of trees to my graph. To do this, I add a new GPU instance scatter next to the previous layer. Note that you must enable horizontal rotation and set the rest by default. Click on the Generate button to display the result. As you can see, the density of the newly added trees is very high. So I change the parameter for this item to get the desired result, then save it in graph and move on to the next item. For the final part of this section, I'm going to add a new layer of trees around my lake, so I go to the Biomes tab and create a new biome filter in the Add Mask section and select the river type. The purpose of this work is to create a more comprehensive graph because the river may be present in the environment when running this graph in other maps. So by doing this, I will consider its prediction in this graph as well. For now, since my goal is the surrounding edges, so I select the borders only option and set its width to 20 meters. As you can see in part 4 video, 
I previously made another biome filter to limit the area around the lake. Now I use the area mixer to combine these two parameters, so I can add my new layer to it. I create my new layer and add it to the new area mixer in the input. As before, I keep making the necessary changes until I get the result I want. And then I definitely save them all in my graph. Finally, it's the turn of the interesting part of this video. You can select the layers created under the Terra World subcategory and refer to the Inspector section, by selecting the Edit Placement option to achieve special items that are very vital and useful in the level design discussion. In this section, it is possible to both paint and erase or even adjust the distribution of each layer on terrain layer surfaces. Therefore, I will only introduce these cases here and I will deal with this issue in detail in a complete video that I will make at the end of this series of videos. Another special feature that the software provides you is the Edit World option. By clicking on this option, all the layers created in the graph can be viewed and changed. You can paint or even delete one layer by isolating it, or paint or delete them together by selecting multiple layers. The noteworthy point in the placement filtering section is that unlike the previous case which was subject to a specific layer, in this section, any change in the distribution of the layers at the terrain layers level is done in general and there is no ability to isolate them. Important note, changes made with this method are only applicable to the scene and cannot be saved in the graph. 
Therefore, each time you press the generate button, all the saved values in the graph will be executed again. So before using the edit world feature, make sure you finalize your graph and no longer want to change or run it. I hope you have enough information by now, wait for our next videos.